Hey, this is Anthony with Revsolo. Watch, decide, and ride. Welcome to our detailed breakdown of the new Climb TK1200 modular helmet available at Revsolo.com. New for fall of 2016, this is the TK1200. Hey, Climb, you're on the gas here. We've seen new helmets from Climb just roll out. We saw the KR1, which is sport-oriented. We saw the TK1200, which is their carbon fiber modular. And there's, of course, the Krios, which is going to be their more adventure dual sport. Now, there are a couple of things that jump out here on this close to $600 helmet. Now, before you choke, there's a lot going on that you haven't seen in a lot of other places. First up is this is still the only autoclaved carbon fiber helmet on the market. At three pounds even, you're looking at, and when I say carbon fiber helmet on the market, I mean modular helmet, you're looking at a three pound even carbon fiber modular helmet. Most modulars are really in the mid threes, closer to the four pound range. There is nothing this light with a flip face on the market. Now I will tell you, they stole from a helmet that we absolutely loved before that used to be in the US, and that was the Laser Monaco. Laser Monaco used to have that moniker of that carbon fiber modular. Climb seems like they have teamed up with them, stolen what was really great about that DNA, and then improved upon it. And that's how we land here at the TK1200. So if we looked at it, the helmet got lighter, now three pounds even. They also have updated the shield change mechanism where it's one touch but remember this is still a full transition shield and it still comes with a pinlock max vision in the box now for those of you that follow us religiously and know this laser monaco the other big change here they've made is the chin bar and there's really two things the first is the vent scheme which is going to be completely overhauled with this new style chin bar as well as this new release mechanism and the second thing that they have done is they've given you two to four more millimeters of clearance here so again it used to be too tight too close to the face now it's going to expand out and be a little bit more comfortable so what you really have is a super high-end autoclave carbon fiber, three pounds ease, even lightest on the market, functional modular that doesn't even need to have a drop-down sun visor because it has the transitions lens stock in the box. So again, there's a lot going on here. There's a lot of technology that we're really excited to see finally back in motorcycling in this DOT ECE shell. Now, quick note on fitment, then I'm gonna walk through all the features front to back. If we looked from a fit scheme standpoint, it's an intermediate oval head shape. So again, just like mine, a little bit longer front to back. I wouldn't call it long and narrow. I certainly wouldn't call it round or neutral. You're kind of squarely in that intermediate oval place. I will tell you though, it fits about a half size small. So for me, I typically wear a medium in your showy, in your awry, in whatever the size chart typically says, I'm right in that medium range. When you get to the Climb TK1200, I actually, in between sizes, I went up a size. So I'm actually wearing a size large. So use your size chart, home in, and if you're right on the cusp or you're in between, go with the bigger size because it runs a little bit smaller, even though it is that intermediate oval head shape. Now keep in mind, we'll ship free over 39 bucks. We do have the size chart there that you need to kind of adjust depending on where you fall. And as always, I love if you click our logo, subscribe to Revzill on our YouTube channel, leave me your comments, your questions, your feedback on the new TK1200. Now, back into some of the things that weren't changed over that previous laser Monaco, which was really the DNA here. Let's get into this helmet itself and kind of break it down. So outside in, it's pre-preg carbon fiber. We've talked about it, three pounds even. The left side of the table here has the tech graph you add paint to it, you're adding four ounces actually, so three pounds, four ounces. For frame of reference, the Schubert C3 Pro is really going to be in that three and a half pound range. So again, you're saving nearly a half a pound over other premium modulars in the set. Showy Neotech's going to play here as well. So again, also, if you happen to like carbon fiber, you can see it here. It's going to be a 45 or a 90 degree angle carbon fiber. You can see how it comes together. And they're autoclaving this now. That's how they're able to shave additional ounces off of it. If we think about the, the mechanism on the outside of this helmet, let's think about where venting schemes pop into play. Now, you'll see this when I pull the helmet apart. That we still think they could improve the venting on the inside of the helmet through the EPS. We have a big chimney vent on top. You have a top, we have a chin vent down here with two position, first position to the shield, second position to the face, and then third position is going to be closed. And again, that ties everything together. And along the back here, you do have <coughs> you do have some passive venting that's going to come out through the back side of the helmet. Again, not open and closable, but again, your main vents are gonna be on the front entry point of this helmet. We did talk about the shield. We've talked about it a couple times. Remember, in about 20 seconds, you go from clear to medium tint with a transitions lens. Again, optically correct, UV proof. Again, it's class one. That's why these things add so much cost because these are the same transition shield technology that you're seeing in Bell. You're seeing it come down the pipe in Showy. Again, it's a third-party technology they're incorporating. 
operating. And again, this is going to be a multi-density, multiple millimeter shield here that also does have your pin lock post. And remember, the Max Vision pin lock lens is going to be stock in the box. The other thing they changed here on the original Monaco that we saw come previously, it used to have a pretty wonky shield change mechanism. What Climb has done, rightly so, is they've developed a single point of entry and exit right here along the side. You can see it's not the easiest to use mechanism, but it is separated from the hinge. And what that is going to offer you is the ability to quickly take this off without having to get tools off. You used to, on the previous version of this helmet, you used to have to at add tools, or even if it was just a quarter, to be able to unscrew a mechanism. It's nice to see that as it just gets easier. We think about the shield change mechanism, it is a premium shield change mechanism, and it also does go past vertical, so that is a safety feature. If you happen to get yourself into trouble and your shin bar happens to be open, what it's going to do is it's not going to snap your neck, it's just going to break away. So again, think about that. Again, it's a very forward-thinking approach. Again, the big thing here to talk about, though, is the fact that it's a mechanism that's tried and true, but it's on a very, very lightweight helmet. Now, if I open it up from the bottom, this is a feature that's going to be polarizing to some. This is your micrometric. And a micrometric strap is something that we see in Europe a lot, and we see it on modular helmets. Some folks really like this. Some people like their double D-ring. It's a choice that you're going to have to make. The nice part about it is it's a one-hand opening for the strap, but it also kind of has the dual hinge, so it's not going to be accidentally open. So I like how they've done this. It's forward thinking. Sometimes you see the micrometric that can be accidentally opened. This one's not going to be accidentally open. You have to pull it the same way, and you have you can pull it with one hand. So it's a specific way to open. We look at the bottom, reflective on the bottom of the neck roll, reflective on the chin curtain. This is fully removable. If I click my button and open it up, you're going to see, here's my neck roll. So let me pull out my neck roll here. You can see how all this ties together. It ties in actually behind your cheek pad. So let's start with the cheek pad first. Basic cheek pads, this is Climb using their Aegis liner, which is antimicrobial. It's going to be wicking. Again, it's a premium liner. This is a north of a $500 helmet. I'm going to pull my cheek heads out from both sides. And one of the things I'm going to call out here is as I'm removing the neck roll, it does slide out. It's one of the trickier ones. So there are easier neck rolls on the market to operate. This is not one of the easier ones. It's always hard when you have to kind of snake it in like that. But you can see it stays in place. It's soft. It's going to be Aegis on the inside. It has the tabs to keep it in place. When I open this up, you're going to see there are speaker pockets in here. And again, even though it's a modular, it's flat enough that whether you're using a sticky mount, I think a clamp mount is going to be a little bit harder to use here. You are going to be able to adapt, and you're going to have enough, plenty of room for speakers if you want to add them. Many cases, folks, guys or gals that are riding modular helmets, they want the ability to add that comm unit because they're doing touring, they want the versatility, and they want the technology tie-in with their bike outside of the musical factor. Now, if we open up the rest of the helmet here, you'll see your comfort liner is going to be Aegis as well. Three snaps comes right out. Remember, it's DOT, ECE rated. And if we look at it, big cutouts. It's an updated inner liner. You're going to see here that you have the ability to flow air through the top of the liner. And when I get into the helmet guts itself, you'll also see that this is where I think that they can improve. I think that they give you those 10 millimeter vent holes. They flow air directly to the forehead. They flow directly air to the top of the head, but they could be cut out a little bit more deeply to promote more efficiency and air flow through the helmet. I will say this, if you're comparing this to something like the Shelly Neotech, I think it's going to hang. If you're comparing this to something like the Schubert, the Schubert is a bit of a step forward. The Schubert's not going to be as light, but it is balanced. You don't feel that weight as much. I will tell you the Schubert's quiet. If you're moving up to something like the Schubert C3 Pro, it's because you're looking for a quiet helmet. This helmet has pads in the ears that are going to sound dampen, but a lot of guys, you know, if you're thinking about that next leap forward, you'd be investing, you'd be trading some weight for some quiet factor, where we found that this guy is going to, it's going to be about as loud as your normal premium helmet. But I mean, Schubert is truly optimizing for extreme quiet when they think about their lids. You've heard my opinion of it. You've heard how it breaks down compared to some of the other net modulars that are in the competitive set. And honestly, I was really honest about the fact that we saw the guts of this helmet previously in that Laser Monaco. What Climb did is they sounds like they've teamed up with Laser from a manufacturing standpoint and said, here are all the things that we think could take a good helmet and make it a great helmet, and we're excited to see where they took it. So again, that's how I'm looking at this helmet, and I'm very happy to see carbon fiber and three pounds in a modular finally back on the US market. But next step in your journey is click the info button, desktop, mobile device, visit the product detail page at RevZilla.com, read other rider reviews. You shouldn't just take my word for it. As always, we'll ship forever 39 bucks. If you want to talk to a gear geek, see us at RevZilla.com or 877 792 Nine four five five. Thanks for watching our detailed breakdown. Remember, subscribe to us at Revzel on our YouTube channel. Stay up to date with our opinion on the latest and greatest in the Moto Universe. I'm Anthony. We'll see you next time.